You, welcome back to the Facebook Advanced Ad Course, basically where I'm sharing everything I've done to scale business past $600,000 per month of about $100,000 a month in ad spend. In this video, I'm gonna be getting into Facebook ad copy, basically everything I've learned about it and everything I think will work regardless of what niche you're in. Again, you might be wondering, why am I doing this? Well, what I like to do whenever I nail down an ad platform, I like to make a super advanced course in it, just like our YouTube ad course where I scale the business past a million dollars a month. You should check that one out if you get bored too. That being said, I don't wanna waste your time because I hate when people waste my time. So let's just hop straight into it. I wanna show you what I think is the best ad copy and at least one of the highest performing ways to write your ads on Facebook. So, uh, all right, everyone, welcome back to the whiteboard of truth and justice. It's ugly, it's bad. The presentation value is less than $5, but this is basically where every major ad discovery in the history of man has ever been discovered. So you're welcome. This is what genius looks like. I'm done making jokes. Let's actually talk about ad copy, all right? So look, the first three things I wanna teach you and the biggest thing about ad copy is actually not doing stupid things. And I'm gonna show you my three highest converting types of ad copy, but they're not gonna work if you do stupid things. Because if you do stupid things, usually you get bad results. And these are the stupid things I see chronically. All right, so here's stupid thing number one. Look at this sidebar ad right here. LegendLondon.co. It's got the shirt off. What, what, in, what in gravy's name is going on right here? What is this selling? What is this doing? Rule number one, the ad copy is it has to make some form of sense. If you're putting ads up and they're going in the sidebar or they're going on Instagram and parts of the ad are missing that are not missing on other parts of the ad. For example, this is obviously meant to run in the news feed. They probably did a description or something with the ad where it will make sense. Well, if you're doing that, that's stupid. It's stupid. As much as Facebook is going to optimize your ads, it's not gonna out-optimize stupidity. This right here, driving sales, driving traffic, but no sales, written in ant text, get $300 credit. It's not, I don't know what they're selling right here. I don't know what they're selling right here. And this is a Tic Tac ad, Tic Tac ad. Tic Tac, Tic Tac, I don't, you see the kids posting their faces and dances on there? And I'm glad I'm not 15 anymore. Those people are terrifying. Anyways, look, check out the difference with this ad. So check this out right here. This is what it's gonna look like in the sidebar, at least somewhat like that. This ad AA drops ad cost 52% in some case studies. We have this guy holding this little chip. So what's going on here? Is this the only way you should design your ads? No, no. But I have ads that are specifically made for the sidebar. I have ads that are specifically made for Instagram because you're gonna see dramatically different displays on different networks. Look at this right here, there's no headline, okay? So this ad right here where you see this headline right here, this big sexy headline that gets the juice, it's not gonna do as well on Instagram because if you run ads in 2020 and you're not using AI tracking script, you're at a huge disadvantage, you cuts off. If I wanted to run this on Instagram, I wanna put a headline right here. Something that tells them what they're gonna get if they click and then get everything before this more thing because we all know people on Instagram, they're not there to read, all right? They're there to look at Kylie Jenner's butt. And so that being said, you, know, you gotta distract them from that thing, okay? So what you need to do is you need to go and really hit them hard with an Instagram ad. This wouldn't work well on Instagram. Very, very important. You need to design your ads for the platform they're gonna be on, but you're gonna think, well, oh, doesn't it just optimize to put the most possible place? Yes, but you could get an absolutely great return if you optimize for Instagram only, and then you could really crush it, not only in the newsfeed, but then also on Instagram, and then also in the sidebar. You can actually do fantastic in the sidebar area because everybody's ads look like this, because everyone's a goof troop and tries to run the same exact ad on every single place. Ad copy 101, don't be a freaking idiot, okay? Don't be a goof troop. <clears throat> don't be a pressed ham. Next, the goal of the ad is to click. So what I see people try and do is I see them try and make the sale in the ad. So they have like a long winded video, they have long text, and don't get me wrong, there's a place and time, and I'm sure you, whoever you followed in ads is like, what do you wanna do is you wanna write a story that convinces the person to change their life and have, no, you, you goof. What you wanna do is you wanna get the person to click the damn ad, so then you can actually grind on them. Because guess what's happening when a person's going through their newsfeed? Okay, I have all my newsfeed blocked because I'm smart and I don't use social media, but we're selling the people like you who watch social media videos. I love you, please keep using social media. I need you to look at my ads. But look, <clears throat> when I'm going through my ads, you can see this ad right here actually has a very long winded copy. It, it, is, it, is a, it is a storybook of why you should use AI tracking with your ads. By the way, you wanna know why you should use AI tracking with your ads? Here's a bunch of call funnels, okay? 
So check this out. I'm using Hyros. It's obviously, as you know, I'm the CEO of Hyros, so I'm a wee bit biased, but I'm also this weird type of crazy person that actually likes to scale their ads based on accurate data. Because what happens if you scale your ads based on inaccurate data and, and La La Land data that isn't actually real? Uh, you get La La Land money, which isn't, isn't accepted at Whole Foods. You can't spend it there. Okay, so I like to work with real numbers so I can actually make real money. You can see right here with the calls that came in right here. First off, Hyros caught seven calls. You might be wondering, well, is Facebook accurate with the tracking? Is it just missing stuff? I can go through and find every single little call that comes into my business and I can see every single click the person's done. Okay, I can see this person. I've been tracking them all this way since July to their click here in, Oco o to their click here in October. Every single call that comes to my business is attributed. Now, that being said, there's seven calls reported right here. Facebook report 11 because it gives itself all sorts of wonky view through conversions and weird other conversions. You can also see right here, there's actually a call that came in right here. Facebook reported, no, nothing came in. And then Facebook isn't even able to track the call conversions on the phone and the actual numbers. If a person comes back and buys one, two days later, forget about it. And then we're not even operating around profit, which if you're running ads and you're not operating around your actual accurate ROI, you're a goblin. I don't know what's going on. Stop doing it. No amount of ad copy is going to allow you to escape being irresponsible with your ad spend and not working off of accurate numbers and accurate data. Literally the same exact thing is going on in AdWords. If you go right here, reported I got five calls, I actually had six, reported I had one, I had two, reported I had four, I had seven. If I'm going off this data right here, I'm gonna be turning off my best ad sets. And if you're doing that, you're just goblin level ad running and you can have great copy, but if you're turning off ads that are making you money or investing in ads that literally aren't making any money or getting you a bad cost per call or bad cost per sale, Dude, stop it. Just stop. You don't have to do that. Just book an analysis call with Hyros below and we'll just literally fix it for you in seconds. But that being said, getting back on topic, the goal of an ad, if you looked at that last ad I showed you, I have this giant, giant copy inside of it. Okay. Giant amount of copy. But the goal is not to get someone to read or be sold on the ad. The goal of the ad is to get them to click with intent and curiosity. That's the goal. A lot of people will say, hey, just get the click or a lot of people will try and sell it in the ad. That's not what you want to do there because when a person's skimming through Facebook, they're at Whole Foods looking at your ad while also looking at a candy bar or they're walking around or they're sitting at their house watching PewDiePie. I don't know, but they're not in a phase where they can be actively convinced or sold to. They can be curiosity peaked and you can start a trigger or a behavior train, which is basically where the person clicks an ad of curiosity and they're more likely to do the next thing. And they're more likely to do the next thing. If I have an ad right here that says click for cat pictures and a person clicks the ad, they're not going to respond the way I want on the next page. If I put something that says this ad AI drops ad cost 52%, which it does, you should probably use it. But the next thing I want them to do, if I want them to become a high risk customer is then opt in to watch a video on this. So the next page they go to, they're super interested in how this works. So what then happens is this piques their curiosity. If they read this description right here, they get primed to opt in. I don't tell them the answer. I don't tell them what they're going to get. I make them go, holy moly, I really need to know what this is if I want to move forward in whatever I'm trying to do in my life. And this heavily applies to the goal that's very important to me, but I'm not selling them or convincing them to use tracking this ad. I'm convincing them that they're at a big disadvantage if they're not using this thing I'm talking about. Then they click the ad and then they're more inclined to opt in and then behave the way I want them to. That's what you want to do. You don't want to get them to buy. You don't want to convince them to change their life here. You want to convince them that they need what is going to be on the other side of this page. They need to take the next action. And what I mean by need to take the next action is we don't say click this ad to opt in. No, they need to complete whatever happens next on the page, whatever it is, because they're missing this thing in their life. That's what you're trying to achieve with the ad copy. Finally, what you need to understand about when you test ad copy is what Facebook is going to do is it's not going to run your ads based on which one gets you the most sales and whatnot at least in theory. Sometimes it works out like that, but what it's going to do is it's also going to look at a bunch of factors that don't really have to do with your sales, like which one gets the best interaction rate and engagement rate. That's not always the one that gets you the best results when it comes to sales. So what you want to do when you split test your ads is you want to go and make a testing campaign. Okay. And then what you want to do in each campaign is you want to have the same exact audience, maybe put $20 a day on each audience, five ad sets targeting the same audience at $20 a day, then put five different ads across all those ad sets. So if you have five ads, one ad in each ad set, that is a tongue twister. But what you should have is five ad sets and one ad in each ad set that's different. And that's how you split test it because it's gonna show you your best opt-in rate and your best metrics. And that's gonna tell you which ad is working the best. 
These are just three fundamental things that people mess up. And when you mess these things up, you're doing stupid things and you're not going to have good ad results. And I want you to have good ad results so that when you scale your ads and you're making a ton of money, you're like, well, I'm losing a ton of money because I'm not tracking my ads right. Maybe I should use Hyros. Stop being a goblin. So let's talk about my three types of ads that I basically run. So the first type of ad copy that I run is actually quite simple. It's called the peak and click. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to use curiosity peaking images. So check out this image right here. These are very simple ads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to run ads that look native, like a news source. So you can see right here, this ad AI drops ad costs 52% in some case studies. And I have a picture of this woman with tattoos and I have this little chip right here. And so what I find works exceptionally well is when you have someone holding something that's weird or you have something that looks weird and is unexplained. A lot of people put pictures of like liver or like they used to, one thing that used to kill it on Facebook is people put pictures of like raw eggs and like funny formations. And people are like, what is that? Now, that is spammy. You want to have something that ties into this and looks like something someone would put on a news site. If you have a picture of yourself next to you in a suit holding, crossing your arms, no, you look like a goober who's trying to sell something on Facebook. If you have this picture right here, it looks like something interesting is happening in the world of technology. With combo this with this headline, it seems like, hmm, if you don't read this, you're going to be missing out in the world of technology. And so what I want to do with these types of ads right here is I want to pique their interest and trigger FOMO specifically. That's one of my biggest strategies when it comes to anything I'm selling. You want to make people particularly feel like they're missing out if they don't know what's going on. Combine it with the image that catches their attention and a headline that makes them feel like that. You're going to get the click. Now, remember, you can't just put something like, hey, people that, that don't eat this food's head explode. All right, you'll get a lot of clicks, but it doesn't make any sense what's gonna happen on the next page. It has to relate to what you're doing. I'm selling technology and tracking, so I want people who are interested in their ads, interested in their ad costs, to feel like they're missing out and they're not on the cutting edge of technology. This gets them to come onto the next page and FOMO triggers them and gets them to opt in and go through the rest of the sales funnel. FOMO is the most powerful thing you can use when you're writing very quick gimmick ads like this. I get a click that's relevant because again, the criteria is right here. Ad AI, drops ad costs. No person who's interested in losing weight is gonna click this ad. People that are interested in saving money on their ads right away, they're gonna click this ad because they feel like they're missing out. This is the first type of ad copy, okay? And the most important thing you need to understand about Facebook ad copy as well is I really don't care what's below this fold right here. I know some people that will preach and they write their life biography right here. Most people are going to read this part of the ad, they're going to read this part of the ad, and they're going to look at the image and they're going to click. Okay? So it's very important that you get all your message in before the see more part right here. You want to put it in mobile variation, and I go and always end it with a here's why or keep reading at this point. Because, yeah, this is some good copy right here. However, the key to it is if you run ads in 2020 and you're not using AI tracking scripts, you're simply at a huge disadvantage. People want to know more. They want to see what's going on here. So the next type of ad right here is more of a traditional ad, something you're probably used to and seeing in the internet marketing world. This ad right here, which Hanif Mohadi absolutely hates, you can see the angry emoji right here. Okay? So here's how you make good video ads. Make sure the thumbnail, I'm using the same exact strategy with the image ad I showed you. People are like, what's going on right here? And I put this AI script as the biggest edge in page ads. People want to know what's going on right here. Okay. Again, when you're running video ads, make sure to put captions on because people don't turn on sound. They just sit there like a brain dead goblin and they read the text. I do the same thing. I'm a goblin in every form of my life. All right. So I don't expect other people not to be. So what's going to go on in this ad right here is again, it's just straight up FOMO. And what you want to do in videos <clears throat> is a lot of people, for example, I saw this one person, let's just say selling like a YouTube or ad consulting course or something like that. The person in the video makes this huge case that YouTube or Facebook ads or their ad strategy is a new way to go. Things are changing. Like, look at my ad manager. These are the strategies that are working in 2020. That's not what I want to achieve. I want the person to click the ad and go, man, this guy has something that I need really badly. And I want to get them to knee jerk, do what I want them to do on the next page. And so what I have right here is I'm not telling them about how tracking changes the world or how it's going to improve their scale or how that they're going to see more accurate data in their ad managers. It's too much for them to comprehend. What I tell them is if you click on the next page, I'm going to give you a script that's going to help you save 52% on your ads. They click on the next page. It says how we use print tracking and AI to save 52% of our ads. Opt in. People go, okay, that's what I came for. 
That's the thing that piqued their interest. They opt in and then they see a sales video that actually does the grinding and the working on and explains how sales tracking scripts combined with AI actually do save money on ads. And I'm able to actually lay out and hit them with a message because they're not scrolling through Instagram. They're not scrolling through YouTube anymore. So what you want to do when you're running these types of video ads, especially when you're doing info marketing, is you want to find the one thing people really care about. And what people really care about when it comes to tracking is instantly getting customers much cheaper. And so the whole entire ad focuses on, if you pay attention to what I'm saying, I will give you this thing that gives you that exact result that you want to get. And the reason why this result works is because tons of other people say it works. Look at all these other people that have gotten this result. And if you click this ad, I will give you the same exact thing that got these people the result. Okay. So that's the format that I use over and over again with my video ads. <clears throat> Make sure you have a big enticing headline that matches that strategy. I talked about the images go straight into it. Say, look, this thing is getting this result that's super important to you. And if you don't have this, you're missing out. You're spending way more money than you should. You're doing this X, Y, and Z thing that causes pain. I know this sounds ridiculous, but here's tons of other people that have gotten the same exact result. And if you click this ad, I will give you this exact thing and show you exactly how to use it to get this result. Click this ad. Leaves a person with one thing in mind. They have the key result that they want, which is all you can hook them on. You're not going to sell them on a new theory of life. They click on the ad. They have massive curiosity and they're inclined to do what you want them to do on the next page. I want them to opt in so I can really work on them retargeting wise. Cause that's a whole other video. You should check out my retargeting video on this channel. Cause that's a whole other beast of a game, but that's what I'm trying to do with this type of ad. <clears throat> the final type of ad that I like to run is a specific type of retargeting ad. And I just want to show you cause it's important. So when I run retargeting ads, Again, watch my retargeting video on this channel because there's like a zillion other things that I do. But one of the things I find is super useful is I make funny retargeting ads. Why? Because when people see retargeting ads, they don't care. Most retargeting ads are like you sitting in there saying like, hey, you watched my video training and you should be interested in my thing. Why did you leave? I'm so mad. And if you want to schedule, they didn't schedule a call because they didn't like you in the first place. Okay. They didn't, they weren't interested and approaching them with like another straight up repeat of what you just said works retargeting wise, but if you want to make it better, I make funny ads. Okay. I make funny ads to catch your attention, make them laugh a little bit and then say, Hey, come on back. Cause we're not trying to convince them to do something again. We're trying to get their attention and get them to come back. Best way to get someone's attention is to give them something funny. People like reading funny things. And so I have all sorts of goofy, goofy ads where I retarget people with like Mecca Reagan Raven finds your lack of tracking disturbing people go, what's that? Oh, that's that brand with that tracking thing. And they're like, you know, they do get results and then they come on back and then I can work on them again through a sales video. We don't want to resell them right here because again, you cannot sell to someone who's already on Facebook. They're doing other things. And there's like 16 other things literally scientifically designed to get their attention. Why would you ever try to make your sales pitch when, when the person's being distracted? That's like literally trying to go on a date with a girl where there's like 16 other guys all like throwing roses in her face and buying her a drink. And then there's just like a chimpanzee screaming in her ear. You're probably not, it's probably not the next best way to meet your wife. That's what I'm trying to say. So tip, if you're going on hinge or bumble dates, try to do it in a, in a room where there isn't 16 other gentlemen suitors and by all means avoid that monkey. Okay. That'll lead to a really awkward date and there'll probably be feces thrown. So that is the lesson for today, guys. If you like these lessons, subscribe to this channel because I'm completing this Facebook series and I'm releasing a new video almost every two to three days on this. Two, track your ads. You should do it. If you're scaling your ads at all and you want to set up that tracking I showed you earlier in the video, go below this video, just track a consultation. We'll show you exactly how it works, show you where you're losing a ton of money in your ads, show you where you can scale. And the way Hyrus works is if you don't see the results that help you scale and make a lot more money, you don't pay. So you should check it out because the worst thing that could happen is you stop running goblin ads and actually run with accurate data. Finally, if you're interested in that ad mastermind I talked about, you can book a call with me below. I'll go through your ads. We'll analyze your ads. Look at them. I'll show you where you can probably grow the type of funnels you should be running, the targeting you should be using and how to tweak your offers to absolutely crush it on Facebook and YouTube ads. Again, this is for both. These are for super experienced business owners. If you're a complete beginner, use this course. Okay. Use this course. If you're not making 20,000 a month, you're not spending 10, 15,000 a month, at least on ads. Don't go, don't, don't do those things. It's not for beginners. It's not some quick way to make money online. That also being said, go to Facebook, look for the Hyros Facebook group, just type Hyros in. And if you spend money on ads 
a significant amount of money, you can join the group. We have over $50 million a month in media buying spend across all of our members on there because we require people to come in and actually be media buyers. It's the best ad group you're going to find online because we actually have people that actually spend money on ads. That being said, stay tuned. I'm going to be releasing the next video here in a few days. Subscribe so you see that because if you miss it, it's a good one. It's going to be a doozy. I'm going through all my targeting and all the targeting you should be using when you're about to start up and when you're about to scale. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video.